Hey guys, welcome to my journey to 1 million. So today I'm just going to give you the fundamentals of financial literacy and how you can use this in the first steps to increasing your financial intelligence and understanding. So you've probably heard people say, my house is an asset. You buy yourself a house, you live in it, they call it an asset, but the reality could not be further from the truth. That house that you live in is only a liability and will remain a liability. And I'll show you why, right? So this all comes down to the very first thing that you need to really understand, which is the financial statement. So up here, we've got our financial statement. And down here, we've got your assets and liabilities, right? So up the top here, you've got your income. In here we have your expenses, here we've got your assets, and here we've got your liabilities. So when you look at this from a poor, people, poor person's perspective, right, so when I first started out, I grew up on a farm, we grew up poor, right, so you always go to school so that way you can get a job, right? That's where all poor people start. In fact, almost everybody starts with a job. But when you job, you work for money. So that goes into your income. And you think, oh, that's great. The more money you get in your income, the better, right? But the reality is when you're poor, most of that goes into your expenses and then leaves. And that leaves primarily through tax and rent, right? So let's go and look at a middle class person. So a middle class person, they also have a job, right? And then their money is going to go from their job into their income, but it's going to go down into their liabilities because middle class people have the money to get extra toys or maybe they get a house, you know, so they get a house. And then that goes up into their expenses and then leaves. But instead of paying rent, they're paying a mortgage. Right, so that's still money that's leaving because they've got liabilities and expenses, just like poor people do, except they've got more of them because they have more volume of money. But let's look at what makes a rich person more successful, and the reason being, right, is because they have houses and they are assets because they rent them out. If you live in your house, you're paying all this extra money and you're not getting anything back from it apart from you have your house to live in, right? But the rich people have multiple houses that are all for rent and these generate income. So basically the rich people are making money while they sleep because they have assets that they can use as income. So you might think, oh, a liability, what's another major thing that you could buy? You might, you might buy a car, so you got a car. But that is a liability as well, because cars will only ever cost you money. You know, registration, you've got insurance, you've got fuel, all of those extra things. Could you turn a car into an asset? Absolutely. If you get a car like a taxi, or maybe you've got a limo, things like that, or you want to rent your car out, or you've got a ride share program, things like that, that is all extra assets that can then make you extra money for you without you doing a thing. If you want to, if you want to drive around in a Ferrari, you should have a rental car business that hires out exotic cars. You get to drive the Ferrari and it becomes an asset and generates you this passive income. And then you can also hire other people to do all that work for you, like refueling the car, fixing the car, cleaning the cars and hiring them out for you. That's just an example. I know not everybody has the money that they can purchase, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and things like that and when rent them out. But that is an option later on down the track. If you want to start off just with a regular car, for example, you buy a Toyota Camry, right? Just a regular four-door car, nothing special. But you could put it into a rideshare program or you could even rent it out to a person who wants to run Uber in their spare time. So these are different ways that you can then use your car to generate money. But I know not everybody wants to do that. Sometimes you just want a personal car to drive around in. And that's why it's a liability. 
Now you can't eliminate all liabilities. You will have some liabilities and they are necessary sometimes. You know, like you're always gonna need a place to live, right? So if you buy a house for you to live in, that's fine, but just remember it is a liability. It is gonna cost you money. But where it could be beneficial is if buying the house ends up cheaper than renting a house. For example, a lot of people have rent, right? And their rent might be in, in Canberra to rent a house. You're probably looking at uh, a cheap one would be $700 per week, right? That's not per month, that is per week. But if you were to buy a house, depending on the size of your deposit and things like that, you might only pay 400 per week. So that's where it can be beneficial. Uh, and that's where sometimes a liability is a good investment, but it's always going to be a liability because it doesn't generate money, but it can end up cheaper than if you were to rent it out. So another thing you could do is say, for example, that property that you buy has a granny flat, or perhaps you could have a studio at the back or a detached section that you could rent out as an Airbnb. That would then turn that part of the house into an asset. And so therefore it's making you money or at least subsidizing the cost of your living. So those are just a few different things that you can do, but the very basic understanding of the financial statement is the most important part about that. And the most important words you need to know about the financial statement is cash and flow. Because if you've got more cash going out than you do coming in, that's bad. You always need positive cash flow and you need positive cash flow on every single asset you have and you need to minimize your liabilities. So if you don't need five cars, don't get five cars. If you only need one, just get one and don't get the most expensive one. Get one that will do the job well and that you're going to be happy with. But you don't have to go out there and be like, I'm going to grab this new Porsche. You don't need that. Stick with your Toyota Camry until you can build up and build up enough money that you can just splash out and spoil yourself. The idea, the idea of this financial statement is to see how well you can do and how much things that you can change in your life to make yourself better and better off financially. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.